I'm David from powermetal.cl. Okay, cool. So you released your third album with uh, album, Return to Eden, a few weeks ago, and how do you feel about the result? Well, I'm pleased, you know. It's it's God know God knows how many is record for me, like twentieth or something. So the process was it took years to make actually. It took about two years. All in all, all the whole process. So I'm pleased. I think it's a fresh power metal album. Was there a specific reason why it took longer than usually? Yeah, it was like I had to assemble. I had two teams, Finnish team and Italian team, who were working for this album. And so, you know, songwriting took its time and being in two different countries, it takes time as well. So all in all, it was very slow process this time. Yeah, and now it's been out for a couple of weeks. What kind of reception have you gotten from the fans or from the from media? Everybody seems to like it, you know. I'm happy with it because if people like my music, what can I say, you know? Yeah, and I understood that it, in these occasions the vocalists were chosen by the record company. And, and and compared to the previous uh, Avalon albums where you chose, where you wrote the music maybe with the musicians in, with the vocalist in mind, the, the, was did it feel different? It was more difficult because I am a free soul, so my music is free. And whenever you are establishing a system with a record company, especially these days, they are very precise many times what they want. And for me, it was like to write about specific type of songs. It was more difficult for me this time, you know. Yeah, there was more pressure to go in a certain direction. Much more pressure, yes. Yeah. But I think that the result is quite good and I think it, it feels like a stronger album compared to Angels of the Apocalypse and and maybe do you feel that well do you agree with that in the first place? Do you think that this is a stronger album? It's stronger than the second one for sure, yes. Yeah. Do you do you th feel that it had something to do with the fact that you released them so close, the first and the second one, that now you had more time to write or like rethink? Well, it was also because at the, at one point I was very depressed, so I couldn't I couldn't uh, do music. I just stayed at home and I couldn't go anywhere. So, you know, to write music when you're depressed, it's it's not a nice thing, you know. Yeah. So now now you uh, were feeling more creative, and and I think it shows in the in the quality of the songs that like that you are in a very good state of creativeness. Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah, and but was this Avalon project meant to be only a trilogy, or or were you thinking of expanding it, like according to the results, or what kind of plans do you have? It was meant to be a trilogy. You know, when the Frontiers got in, got in touch with me regarding these three operas, uh, they always said it's a trilogy. So I was fine with this, you know. Okay. But the, you also announced announced some plans to tour with Katarina Nix and Mike Vesera. Is this uh, related to Avalon, like an Avalon tour, or like is it just still in the in the plans? Or it's Avalon tour. Yeah. It's planned for the next spring. Okay, are you planning to tour Europe or uh, South America or both? Both. Okay. Cool. So next year. Next year. Yes. Yeah. Have you thought of the backing musicians? Like, what's gonna be the band? I think Yari from Stratovarius will be there. I'm still looking for a drummer and keyboard player. Will be a Brazilian guy called Bruno Sa. Okay. From Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. So you have worked with Caterina in both Avalon and in in the band she's now. Um, yeah. Chaos Magic. And how would you describe it? Like, as you know, she's from Chile as as. The same as we are. Like, do you, how do you feel about working with her? She is a great, great vocalist. You know, absolutely top of the notch. You know, world class singer. Exa exactly like this. I'm very happy to work with her. You know. Yeah. So moving to a different topic. A few weeks ago, we heard the sad news about Andres Andre Matos passing away, and and you worked together in 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 Sinfonia. And like, what was your reaction when when you? found out about this and how do you feel about it? 
But I, I was in shock, of course, you know, when I heard about it. He, he was my friend, you know. And so young guy suddenly gone, you know. We went through some special moments with Symphonia, definitely. And I, I still like the record very much. I think it has some good songs. Yeah, do you want to share any like memories of working with Andre, like your friendship or yeah. some cool story? We, Andre moved to Sweden. He was living in a very small place in Sweden. So um, I flew there and we went to this cabin in the middle of the forest to record the vocals. And Andre came pretty much unprepared because he didn't do the, the lyrics mm. or the songs. So we ended up sitting on the same table and he was writing the lyrics and then he asked me if I'm happy with them. And I was like, it's your job, man. It's not mine. You know, I'm, I'm a producer. So, you know, I was looking at it from a producer's point of view, but those couple of weeks in this cabin were very special. And also because Uli Kush fired himself through email while we were recording the vocals. Weird, very weird guy. Yeah, weird times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, weird. Yeah. It's, it's, it was like very shocking for us as well because he was so young and like still active in music and. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, he was a genius, you know, Andre, definitely. Yeah. Uh, now maybe we can talk about the upcoming South America tour. You announced that you will be playing uh, Stardovarius Classics and, and you asked the fans for help to build the set list and were you surprised yes. by the amount of uh, emails or? <laughs> I shouldn't have asked. It was like hundreds. Okay. Hundreds, maybe thousand emails. Did you go through all of them yeah. or did you get tired? Of course, tired? I, I have my preferences regarding the Stratovarius songs, which are good ones. And I will, I will start the tour in Colombia with Hammerfall. We play in six cities and I'm supporting Hammerfall. So, uh, on the rest of the South America and Latin America, I will play uh, a longer set. Yeah, yeah. So, have you thought, and I don't, we don't want to know exact set list, but have you thought of, like, based on the request that you got? Yeah. What... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, you're building yeah. it at the moment? That's the, it's still pretty much there, you know. I, I have my preferences, like I said, because I was in that band for so long and we did gold together, you know, so yeah, I was... it will be very, a lot of fun for me to play those songs. Yeah, a lot of people in our website and in your Facebook page, they were posting, although you asked for emails, they were uh, asked, uh, writing their, um, what they were, um, their list, the playlist, they, the set list, they were um yeah. writing it there and I was surprised that many people were also asking for all their songs when you were the singer what yeah, do you yeah, think yeah. about that well the thing is that when Timo Kotipel joined Stratovarius back in 95 I decided that I want, I don't want to sing anymore in this Stratovarius because the music was getting to that kind of place where we needed a singer with a higher voice and Timo came exactly the right time, you know. He came to the studio when we were recording Fourth Dimension. So he came to the audition to the Helsinki studio and it was pretty much there when he came, you know. Yeah, so the your upcoming tour is gonna be mostly Cotipelto era, like Well some older ones too, you know. Okay. Some older ones. Yeah, yeah definitely. I'm, yeah, I'm sure people would be really happy to hear those because Tratovarius is not currently playing those like, like yeah that. yeah and you also announced that you're gonna tour at least in south america with local musicians like a support band and why is that and did how did you choose the bands to play with well south america and latin america is full of satar cover bands you know <laughs> so the idea was just to get back to the playing and you know have good times with fans and, and have a good get together. So with, with these songs, with the help of these songs, we can do it, you know. Yeah. Have you checked those cover like tribute bands on YouTube or something? Have you get got some, any reference? Some of them, yes. But there are so many, man. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. But are you going to yeah. like 
play with two guitars, I guess, or are you just gonna take all the guitars? No, one guitar on Okay, me. okay, only you. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And and you chose South South America to do this tour. Is there something special about the South American audience that makes you want come back with all your bands when you have a new project? Well, it's the best in the world, you know. When we came there for the first time with Visions, we were pretty innocent. We we didn't expect, we, we had no idea, you know, being a Finnish, coming there and having 3,000 people sing our lyrics and music. It was like a huge backing choir, every, every fucking gig. Hmm. You know, it was wonderful, you know, fantastic. Yeah. And... You, um, I was well. I, actually, I live in Finland, so I attended that um, Stratovarius gig in March in Osturi, and and you were there, and and York Michael was there. You took a picture together, and Yeah. it was a very special moment. And and there's been some speculations about a possible reunion or like uh, special shows or something like that with a classic lineup. Is there anything true about those rumors, as far as you know? Some, I, I let them know that I would do this, you know, because I think the fans really long for this golden era of Stratovarius. And if we would do maybe DVD or one gig somewhere, you know, that would be good for the fans to see, it's because they never saw this, you know. Yeah, the younger fans, yeah, exactly. Younger fans, yes. Yeah, and you also announced that you were working in some, like, writing some music for, maybe for Stratovarius, is that something that you have been in touch with the band, or...? Yes, I am. I'm in touch with uh, Kupian and Matthias, the guitar player. He's excellent, wonderful guy. So I wrote them, they asked me to write songs for them, but I'm very busy with my own material at this moment. I'm already writing for the next one, so I wrote one song for them. Okay, but do you mean that you're busy with your... Are you planning a solo album or what? Yes, I am, next year. Yeah, more like instrumental or metal? No, or... no, no, like pretty much like Infinite style. Yeah, with a with a fixed lineup or with opera type of uh, different singers? Uh, guest singers, some guest singers, you know. In this moment, I'm just writing new songs. Yeah, so it's taking shape like you don't know the details yet. So, I have it in my head, so I have to write it down. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but like, of course, if it's secret or, or you're still thinking about it, you don't need to tell us now that... No, it's pretty much in the works, you know, but I have to also show myself to different labels still, you know. So I have to write demos and they need to hear the music, so, you know. Um... I would like to work with Nuclear Blast again. Okay. This, this would be very good. Yeah, and I think that the the music industry has changed a lot since you started in the eighties. I don't know how do you feel that it has affected your like career or like your opportunities to to like uh, put your music out. Well, as long as you have the writing talent, the money will come somehow, you know. This is what I believe. Yeah, but nowadays, like most bands said, that they, it comes mostly from touring, merchandise, and like uh, this kind of special editions where you have sign or like meet and greet stuff like that. Yeah, I don't like so much to do this meet and greets because people pay a lot of money to see the bands. You know, they don't have money. So sometimes we had fights with some promoters in Latin America with Stratovarius because they, they did without asking us. They did this meet and greets. And we, we were not happy with it because nobody told us. And we don't want to rip off our fans. So this is, I, I am very much against this, you know. Yeah, okay, I see. And you mentioned like that you've worked or have been in touch with Matthias Kupian and what what kind of relationships you have? Of course, like people might speak, speculate that there's some kind of antagonism because you're both guitar players of Strato Aris, but it doesn't seem to be so. Yeah. Uh, Matthias is more like a um, newer kind of uh, guitar player. I'm from the old school, like Blackmore. You know? Blackmore is my ultimate hero. So, you know. And Matthias is more like Steve Vai type of a player, John Petrucci, this kind of guy. 
Yeah, but if, if you had this reunion, would you share the stage or would you, like, in theory, would you, like, divide the songs or, like, would you share the stage with two guitars? I would share the stage. I would share the stage, definitely, yes. Yeah. And, well, of course, there's, there's a lot of speculation because now they have a new bass player, new drummer, so, like, of course, there's Jarg and there's Jarg and, 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 like, well, yeah. well, Halloween did it in, in a very special way that, a lot of musicians on stage sharing the three guitars, three singers. Yes, I think it was very good for the fans to see Hello and his guest especially because he's really great, as everybody knows. Yeah, and you were mentioning that you're thinking about this project with new, with 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 uh, different vocalists. Uh, if you had the freedom and there was no like uh, con constraints to like build up your your uh, uh, ideal band with current musicians, like how would you do it? Like wh who would you choose if you got complete freedom? Well, I'm a fan of vocalists, you know, because I come from Ronnie James Dio era. So uh, I would love to work with Kiske again, definitely, you know, and maybe do something with Kotipelt as well, you know. I, I just spoke with him on the phone the other day and we were having a good conversation, you know. Okay, that sounds cool. What about Todd Michael? I think he's of the current, of the newer generation since he joined Riot. I think he's one of the best in the of the younger ones. I don't know how, how you felt about his performance in Promises and other songs. He's absolutely a great singer as well. Todd, yes. Definitely, yes. Yeah. But I guess in this case, uh, you they send their tapes like you didn't gather together because they live in different parts of the world. Yeah, I don't like to work this with this way because with Stratovirus, we always, when we did Visions, Infinite and Destiny, we worked in Finbox and I was recording Kotipelto and producing him. So I would like to introduce again some of this same team from Finbox to this album forthcoming solo album okay that's cool and i think i got covered most of my questions if i i can check again if there's something that i missed but at least i wanted well if you if you want to leave a message for your fans in chile or in south america in general invite them to your tour tell them how it's gonna be like it's gonna be fantastic so i'm looking forward to see my fans in, in Latin America, and, and we're going to have a ball together, a good time, and, and seeing the songs like before, and everything will be like new. Yeah, I hope it works out very well, and, and you, at least for the Chilean date, you announced it that Katerina will join you, but would it be like as a guest with her band, or like singing some songs with you? No, it's going to be her band will be supporting me. Okay, good. Yeah, but like, hope the best for you and like, good luck with your projects and thank you for your time. It was an honor. Thank you, my friend.